believe that winning is everything? Um, winning means a lot. I mean, like, you can't be successful and lose all the time, you know? You have to win to, like, get somewhere in life. Well, in America, yeah. Yeah. No. No. Winning is not everything. Working as a team is always better. I mean, you feel like you accomplish more if you work as a team. And if you win, that's just a plus to add on to your accomplishments. No, I don't think winning is everything. Uh, definitely. definitely. Yeah, I agree with that. Not really, though. I mean, there's a lot more than just winning. Not all the time, though. No. Winning can cost, like, destroy a friendship or anything. Winning is everything. You work together to win. Winning is everything. Because you should be best. No, winning is not everything. Winning is good, but it's not everything. It helps, but it's not everything. I believe that winning is important, but it's not everything. A lot of people think that it's everything because you have to be the best, but you really don't because you are the best if you can say that if you try, everything's fine. There's a bumper sticker that reads, whoever dies with the most toys wins. Our culture seems focused on having the most and getting even more. We all want to be living large. Despite what we learned in kindergarten, popular culture tries to convince us not to share. Not to rest and not to be happy with who we are. There is huge pressure to get the best grades. And get into big name colleges. The pressure to excel, to be perfect, has taken over our lives. Competitiveness and being the best, that's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Jack. And I'm Catherine. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. Our spotlight guest today, Ashley, lives in a town that is known for its competitive tendencies. In fact, her high school is so competitive, they had to do away with class ranking, since so many students earn top grades. We'll meet her later in the show and also talk with our studio guests. But first, let's go back to the teens on the street and find out what they are willing to do to win at something. Let's check it out. What are you willing to do to win at something? Anything that doesn't hurt anybody else. Try hard. I'm willing to try my hardest. A lot. Almost anything. I'm willing to do everything. If I have to win, I will do everything to win. Anything. Do whatever it takes. Anything in my power. Anything it takes. I, anything, I guess. Everything. Anything. Anything. Cheat if you must. That's what you have to do to win. Cheating. Cheating is an option. You take it, you cheat, you win. Most of the time, I wouldn't cheat. I would do a lot of things to win, but not nothing too like hardcore. Depends on what I'm competing for. Not a whole lot, because it doesn't matter to me. Not everything it takes. And I think that if you do the best you can, you already won. Even if the other person does better than you, that's just their best. If it was definitely winning a Porsche of like a million dollars, anything, 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 anything goes. Yeah. <laughs> Competitiveness is natural. It's part of what motivates us to work hard and excel. But it can easily get out of hand. We lose perspective, and winning or being the best becomes paramount. Rather than being our best and giving the best effort. Let's see how our studio guests feel about competitiveness. With us today are John, Matt, Kira, Marissa, Ian, and Jessica. What does winning mean to you and what are you willing to do to win? Well, I would do everything to win, not anything, everything. Like, um, I would do whatever I could to win, just nothing like, you know, foul play. I wouldn't, like, hurt anyone's feelings or cheat, anything like that. I'd have to agree with that. I know, like, for me, I'm not the, like, I like to win. I think we all somewhat like to win, but mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't, like, go out of my way to win. If it wasn't meant to happen, it wasn't meant to happen. I think it depends on what you're trying to win, too. Like, if you're in a championship game or something, you're going to do a lot more to win than if you're just playing like a video game against your sibling at home or something. Well, I, I think winning consists of like practicing a lot. If you want to win, you should prepare yourself first and not cheat and do bad things because it doesn't get you further than where you want to go. So Yeah, sometimes cheating can set you back. Like when, when what you're doing to win, you should try and do everything, but if it's if you do something bad, it will set you back. Well, personally, um, I like to be the best. I like to stay that way, and um, I like to win. So I'd pretty much do anything to get there. I, I probably would like lie, cheat, steal, that kind of stuff. Anything to stay the top dog, be on top of the pile kind of thing. Well, that's honest, I guess. <laughs> Next, our spotlight guest, Ashley, tells us about the kind of pressure she feels to compete and win. I would definitely have to say, just from growing up in this specific town, that uh, winning seems to be everything because it's 
kind of like we're taught to win. We want to win, because I mean, I don't think anyone really wants to lose. It doesn't matter how you won, you won. But if you lose, then you're kind of, I guess, looked at as a failure. It's just hard having to be compared to other people all the time. Even my parents sometimes will compare like, oh, so-and-so, you know, has this. And you might be here, but that's still, what you have is good, just not gonna cut it. Basically, everyone's goal in life is to succeed. That's what you wanna do. But what kids do to succeed, that's up to them, but it can take the fun away from just hanging out with your friends. I think what I'm willing to do is basically to, I just try my best and just give it my all because that's what I've been doing for these past three years in high school and it is, I mean, it's hard. The best I can do is just try my best when I'm not gonna lie, there's been, I've been tempted to use other ways, but they're not the right ways to go about things. I definitely agree with her because, uh, you know, from day one we're presented with this view of what you're supposed to do, how your life is supposed to be, you know, you need this, this house, X amount of dollars, you know, this many kids, you know, and we're, we're so focused on getting there, getting to that point that a lot of times we don't have time to stop and smell the roses as we're driving by in our BMWs and stuff. You this know, is like true. Kind of <laughs> do you feel any pressure to win? And do you feel that if you don't win or become the best at something that you're a failure? Of course. In, first of all, in this country, Winning is everything. They put so much pressure on it to just win at everything. And not that I don't believe it, I just think this country takes it to another level. Winning is everything. That's true. It's phrases like all American yeah. that define the best athletes. I think like the other thing too that you have to look at is like we, we're, we all have a standard that we have to hit. And you know that's not really what we should be, but we all have like that perfect model that we're all looking at. Like that's what you have to hit, or you're not good enough. Plus, there are so many different kinds of people in this country that there's people that are good at sports, but there's also really smart people and really musical people. So we compare ourselves to all of those people, not just like one athlete or one musician or something like that. And even like not winning, like people around you like look like you're such a loser like and it's really awful like people look down upon you if you don't win all the time and it's so judgmental like all the time and it's awful you know it really is like I know I'm lucky at home at least my parents don't have that standard they always say John just do your best because it doesn't matter how you are compared to somebody else you don't have to worry about that just be the best that you can be well I know I'm like interested in musical theater and that's like so hardcore because you have to like look a certain way, you have to do things, you have to do everything a certain way and if you can't just do it the right way then you're a failure, like you can't even get into the show, like it's so competitive, it's insane. Yeah. A March 2006 Reader's Digest article entitled Cheating, but everybody's doing it. Cites a report that Rutgers University professor Donald McCabe prepared for the Center for Academic Integrity. The report showed that 70 percent of students at 60 colleges admitted to some cheating within the previous year. One in four admitted to engaging in serious cheating. Including copying from another student. Using concealed notes. Or helping someone else to cheat. And in a survey of 18,000 high school students across the country. 70% of those in public schools admit to serious test cheating. And about 60% admitted to some form of plagiarism. As we said before, Ashley lives in a very competitive environment. She has found that there is quite a bit of cheating going on in her school. Let's hear her story now. Definitely being from a competitive town has played a part in what people will do to achieve uh, or be successful. And that's why, you know, every day, like at least twice a week, I'll see people who are making cheat sheets or, you know, they're even gone in extreme ways by having water bottles with the answers written on the inside and just like, where? Where'd you get that idea from? You know, if someone has a class earlier than you, they can get answers or, and it's kind of, I guess, irritating because here you have these kids that actually go home and study and do the work. And then you have these kids that are just like, oh, you know, I'll, I can just get answers from someone else or someone else can help me out. And they call it two people plagiarized. And you know, that was an automatic fail of this, some paper. There's this one kid or a couple of kids they're cheating in class. The work kind of 
like shocked, I guess, because I guess they didn't expect, you know, here's this really good student who's like a smart student and then they're doing this to get by in the class. And you know, it's not, it's not fair to that person because necessarily you're not learning anything and I think that's the whole reason why we go to school. And to that teacher who tried to teach them some things. And our school doesn't even have class rank and that's partly because it's so competitive. So you have to do other things to stand out. Like if you're smart and you have good GPA and you have good SAT scores, that necessarily won't get you into a college that you want to go to. Then you have to do other things like become involved in community service. And even with community service, like at our school we have a club and people will cheat with their hours just to make themselves stand out because that's what it's come to and that's really sad because you're not helping other people, you're just trying to help yourself and that's kind of selfish. Now that's really low. I mean, lying about your community service hours. Yeah, I know, honestly. That's when you know competitiveness is a problem. So have any of you witnessed any kind of cheating at your school? And why do you think we feel the pressure to cheat? I've witnessed plenty of cheating, me, myself included, because I don't think we're pressured to cheat. I think we're forced to cheat. I mean, if I'm giving, uh, I'm giving so much homework one night, then I, like, it's like four hours of homework. I can't just go home and expect to do four hours of homework. I might like, you know, I go to work and I get out and then I have to do my homework until like 11 o'clock at night with no free time. And if you haven't cheated or copied a homework, I think your high school isn't hard enough. Because I think you're lying to yourself too because everyone does it. I mean, exactly what you said, there's just some of those nights, it's either you're too swamped or you just don't really want to do it, you know? It, it just happens. I think the other thing that happens too is like cheating has become sort of like the social norm at school and people sort of, it's okay to cheat, which sometimes we forget, you know, it really isn't right, it's not morally or ethically right, but it's what we all think is what's acceptable. So sometimes we forget and fall into that idea of, oh, well, I can do it, everybody else is doing it too. I've cheated on tests where, well, I don't I like admitting this, but I was doing poorly in the class and there was like no other way to like, Oh yeah. Well, on like the test, unless I like wrote it on my hand or something, and I felt so guilty afterwards because I just wanted to do well, and there was like no other way. And there are like so many pressures from everywhere, even if it's just something small, like not doing your homework or like a test, because you know you always are gonna feel bad, but there's always gonna be something telling you to do it because you could have like you just want to be on honor roll, you have your parents want you to be on honor roll, like. You can get presented, like I was presented an option to cheat and like I bombed out on the last test. I was one point off in A, I had an 89 and I was like, can't do it. And like I had to throw the answers away because I knew like if I didn't do it then I would regret it. But it was because like my mom wants me to do so well in school and that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, but like I haven't even gone to high school yet so I don't really feel all that pressure to like do the, get the best test grades because it'll all affect your GPA, which affects what college you get into. So I can't say that I've ever like been in that position, but I understand what you guys are saying. Like I know for me, like I've never cheated throughout high school. And one reason that is, because one thing my high school teachers always tried to tell me was, you know, cheating's not acceptable at all. But if you do it, what are you learning? Like you're not getting ahead. If anything, you're putting yourself behind because you don't know it. So if it gets presented again, you won't do it. So I'm just like, you know what, it's not worth it. Might as well study and do my best on it than do it but not know it. The truth is that it's possible to get through school by cheating. But what personal costs are you willing to pay to get the grades? Cheating on tests, lying about your achievements. Pulling papers off the internet and turning them in as you work? Maybe you'll get caught and maybe you won't. What if you had the chance to be the top of your class by cheating and no one would find you out? What would you do? That's what we asked the teens on the street. Let's check it out. If you had the chance to cheat to be at the top of your class and no one would ever find out, would you do it? Why or why not? Um, no, because that's not who I am. Most likely. I'm not gonna lie. If nobody would find out, I'm honestly not sure. Honestly, yeah. If, you're, if you don't have the chance of getting caught, then yeah. If you're not gonna get caught, then that's the perfect time to do it. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, unfortunately mankind is a very selfish species and I'm no different than anyone else. So. I cheat all the time. I don't call it cheating though, I call it networking. I couldn't live with that with my conscience. I mean, I said I would do a lot to win, but I mean, I like to be fair, you know? Like if you are if you get number one and then you didn't work for it, right. then it's like you don't even feel, you feel like guilty. special. Yeah, yeah I'd feel it's guilty, but 
But I, you I'd probably, care. I'd probably do it anyway. I want it. It's like a personal thing, you know. Like I would know that I didn't get it the right way. You would know your entire life that you did not deserve that, and that somebody else who did deserve it could have had it. It's just not something I'd do. The satisfaction of winning isn't as good as knowing that you did it by yourself. Cheating's wrong. I mean, you're never really winning because you always have the guilt in your mind. I wouldn't do it because I know that I would regret it in the future. No, because I would still have like that guilt that I did it and then feel like really bad. If you have to cheat and get like lower your standards, I don't think that's good at all. Not cheating, no. I'd want to do it honestly. No, because it's still wrong. <laughs> it's still morally wrong. It's morally wrong. And I believe in karma, so I don't do things because I know it's always going to come back and bite me. No, I wouldn't do it. No. No, I don't think I would. No, because uh, grades really don't matter to me. No, because I'm not a cheater. Not me personally, because you're going to be stuck with that for the rest of your life, knowing that you cheated. So actually, I wouldn't do that. No, I would do it, but I would probably feel <laughs> guilty for the rest of my life, but I would do it just because um, you're number one. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Um, if I had the chance, you know, number one, nobody would catch me. It's not even a serious question. I'd be all over that. I, I'd be dumb, number one in a second. I, that, I wouldn't even have to think about that, you know? I know, honestly, I'd, I, I'd debate it. I don't know if I'd want to take it from the true valedictorian. Oh, I would. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> How is cheating viewed in your school and your community? Does it seem to be accepted or is it frowned upon? Cheating is such a big thing in my school. Even during in English class on a vocab test, people will be cheating across the room, like, what's the answer to number five? And it's awful, but I, don't, I didn't cheat on that one. I think that cheating is frowned upon no matter where you go, but it's the fact that people accept the fact that it's wrong and they can get past it, and that's why cheating is so abundant in schools. In my school, um, the kids all think it's fine. They, they do it all the time. The teachers, they all think it's wrong, but it's to the point that it happens so much that they're like, they don't even check anymore if you're cheating. It just happens so much. In my school, cheating's kind of like breathing. Um, <laughs> it, it happens a lot. It's just maybe, maybe not like cheating on a test and stuff, but if you like walk through the school in the morning, there's basically one homework being passed around to a thousand people. It's kind of like <laughs> how it goes, but because because we get like a lot of work at our school, so. The, you know, some kids like split up the workload and then like cheat off each other, so. You know, I think the other thing too is like, at least in my school, it was big a couple years ago, but the faculty decided, you know what, we're gonna crack down. So cheating has actually gone down. And that's a lot because of like, people actually start to accept that it's wrong and like more consequences are being brought. Like there's a website teachers can go on to check like if a certain part's plagiarized or not. And I think that's good. Like we have to focus on what ways can we change it instead of like, oh, it's always going to be around. If we can try to figure out, oh, how can we fix it? We might be able to stop it eventually. All of our papers have to be turned in electronically so they can check it on turnitin.com. Yeah, that's what we and did. If, if they find that you cheated or something, you can get like kicked out of the school or something. It's awful. I know this kid who turned in, I think it was the last paper of the year to a history class and he took like five paragraphs straight out of some old textbook. But the, so, but the teacher had been there for like 25 years and so reading through the paper recognizes what he used to teach like seven years ago. The kid got, oh my gosh, so much trouble. He lost credit for the paper, lost credit for like the last few tests because then the teacher was like, oh, Actually, now that I noticed this, I think you might have been cheating for a few months. So he got in serious trouble. He was suspended and all this kind of stuff. There's creative ways like turnitin.com to make it less, pre less prevalent, but it really needs to stop. Integrity in schoolwork is a happy symptom of integrity in your life. And people are drawn to integrity. If you're honest about your work and honest about your abilities. If you are willing to work hard and able to admit your weaknesses. Those are signs of good character. Universities, employers, and people of influence look for integrity and often value it above perfect stats and perfect grades. We're not saying that competitiveness is bad when it motivates you to do your best. But when competitiveness leads to cheating and dishonesty, it becomes unethical. Let's find out what the teens on the street think about this. We ask them, at what point does competitiveness become sinful? And if their faith teaches them anything about competitiveness. Let's check it out. What kind of competitiveness do you think is sinful? Sinful? Like when you're cheating, I guess? When you're like 
when you hurt somebody else? I really don't know. The kind where you have to end up cheating for it, but I mean, um, it's good to be competitive. It's good, competition is good. Extreme competitiveness uh, because, like I said, that, that goes back to cheating as well. When you're willing to cheat, I don't think that some, if, if you cheat, it's just not right. Cheating. Cheating. Like cheating. Cheating. Unfaithful. Cheating. Violent competitive. Yeah, I kind of have to agree with that. What does your faith teach you when it comes to being competitive? Does it teach you anything? Just to be honest to yourself. Just not to like hurt other people. And I know that if I want something really bad, I will try as hard as I can to get it. But if I'm going to be hurting people in the process, then I'm not going to do that. To just try your hardest and don't like try to hurt other people in the process or in the way. Sometimes our competitiveness can come from the desire to obtain things that someone else has. We are jealous of the success of others or want the things they have. Things like being class president or having a sweet ride. <laughs> we want the same things for ourselves, so we do whatever it takes to keep up with them. Worse, we become envious of anyone who does better than we do or has more. According to the Catholic Catechism, jealousy and envy are sins. In fact, Envy is one of the capital sins. Sin clouds our conscience and corrupts the concrete judgment of good and evil. So what can we do? How can we enjoy healthy competition? How can our faith help us to identify unhealthy competitiveness? And give us the strength to make the right choices and compete fairly. Next, Ashley shares her thoughts on this. I can talk to my friends. They're all really competitive and stuff. They're like, look, listen, like, you're going to get into a good school. You're going to get a good job. Good things will come if you just try your best. And then also just turning to God, you know. Youth group has helped just going there and just for two hours we can kind of just forget about school, even though, I mean, it's always in the back of your mind. I think um, with competitiveness, my faith just teaches me to, you know, be real about things. How you are and what kind of person you are, that's what matters. And I think a lot of kids don't really realize that. They're just, I guess, expected to get those numbers, to get those grades, and then expected to go to an um, elite college and succeed there. God definitely is always going to be there for you no matter what. I mean, I don't think numbers mean anything to him. He would never look or degrade you based on what you get in school. As long as you're being true to yourself and like, true to your peers and true to your um, parents and just like everyone that's in your life, I think that's all you can ask for and just by doing that you should be, you'll be fine in life. At what point does competitiveness become excessive and lead to sin? What else does your faith teach you about competitiveness? I think competitive, competitiveness that leads to sin is when you're hurting other people like some of the people said on the man on the street and when you're doing something so bad just to get ahead is that's sinful. So. It's like you're not really getting ahead because like when you hurt someone or you hurt people's feelings or you lie or steal, that's like just setting you back. Like you're gonna have a guilty conscience, so. I think it's important if you are a competitive person to maintain ethics. Just like, you know, you, you wake up every day and you're like, I'm gonna work really hard today. I'm gonna get ahead. You should also, I feel I should also think I'm gonna do it the right way. And I'm gonna have my morality on my mind. I think there's a point where you have to step back and kind of say, you know what, these are just numbers and letters on a report card, you know, these you know, could compared to morality and, you know, being a good person, what are these, like ink on a paper, I mean, come on, seriously, like you have to step back and kind of look at it like that. Well, my faith teaches me how to be a good person and to compete for bad reasons, like to go against what you believe, to go against your faith would be wrong like that's simple yeah and also the commandments like teach like guide your life so when you're when you try to get ahead and are really competitive you're breaking some of those commandments and that's not the way you should be living your life I know in the scripture it talks about how when Jesus was beginning his ministry the Pharisees always used to try to compete with each other and try to outdo each other like oh well I can stay on my knees and pray longer than anybody else or I can fast longer or anything like that and when Jesus came on the scene he was really trying to break the mold and he was like you know what do it because you love God you know we're not competing with each other we're all we all have one goal that we're trying to hit and that's God as long as we always keep God 
focused on God. That's all we really need to do because we're each going to have a different challenge trying to stay towards that goal throughout our life. And we just have to remember that that's the real prize and that's the only thing God wants us to focus on. It doesn't matter what anybody else does or says. It's just what God wants from us that as long as we're true to ourselves and true to everyone else about ourselves, that's all he wants. When we fix our eyes on the prize, what does it look like? Without a specific goal in mind, we wander through our lives. But how we go about achieving that goal is just as important as the goal itself. It can help to define what kind of person we become. If I get something by taking it away from someone else. I am a thief. If I pretend to have power or ability that's not naturally mine. By taking drugs or cheating on a test, then I am a liar. In his book, Rediscovering Catholicism, Matthew Kelly reminds us that there is a distinctive goal that has been shared by all the saints of the church. The saints ask themselves, will this help me become the best version of myself? If you have a goal to be a holy person, a person of integrity. Ask yourself this question when you feel competitiveness becoming your controlling emotion. Do you feel overwhelmed by competitiveness in your life? We want to hear your story. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And one final thought. In the Christian life, cooperation and collaboration are understood to be more beneficial to building up the body of Christ than competition. These styles acknowledge that we are social by nature. God made us this way. We need each other. We only become our best selves in relationship with others. And the mission of Jesus is furthered. To the extent we can all bring our gifts to the work. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.